No, 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 I got, thank God, locked out. Let me in. Let me in, let me in. There we go, we're in, we're in, we're in. Okay. <laughs> I swear I thought we were about to miss the final attack of the war. Now the battle day has started, guys. It's time for Tribe Gaming versus Navi. This is Bracket Reset. The next winner of this match is going to claim the Fire Clash League Grand Finals Championship. Town Hall 16 has become a race against the clock. You gotta get the triples, you gotta get the perfect wars, and you gotta do it insanely fast. We do see Neeprox coming in for the open attack here with stars on defense. We did expect that the match previous to this would end up going to a double perfect war, but actually Tribe Gaming's bases and largely their defensive clan castle choices were what ultimately slowed Navi down and caused a couple of misses. We saw two misses. The, the match that caused this one to go to bracket reset ended up being a 13-15 in the favor of Tribe Gaming, but this one is also running into some, a little bit of a struggle there. That Super Dragon that came out of defense on the top side end up slowing down the E-Drax in the area and ultimately ends up leaving up the Clan Castle and the Monolith. So, e might be in trouble here. We'll see what comes out of the Clan Castle in addition to that. But with the Super Dragon already deploying, I suppose there's probably not anything big in there. The biggest thing that he needs to take care of now, knowing that the Super Dragon came out, is getting down the Monolith. So the World Champion is diving there, but she's going to go right into the Ricochet Cannon. He puts a Skeleton Spell down right there to try to get some distraction, but he's got his own distraction right there. Ground Skelly's popping, pops the RC ability right there and tries to get through it faster. And he's trying to keep it alive here. It's really, really unsure whether this one's going to go through or not. And I mean, I wouldn't expect Tribe Gaming to miss here, but I think he might actually end up with a miss here. If he can't hold this together, the World Champion getting the multi Inferno down. Looks like he's got that on the final strike of the World Champion. She's going to go down. Queen's still alive. Queen was running the Healer Puppet. And guys, the defensive Super Dragon is doing something very similar that it did to Navi in the round before this that forces the bracket reset. Slows it down. This one, luckily for them, is not going to a miss. And look at the attack time. It is going to go all the way up to about two minutes, but it is going to lock in at... One minute and 57 seconds here for Nibrox. A little bit of a scare, but he gets it done in the end. If that ended up being like a Lava Hound or Ice Golems on defense, that would have been completely crushed way, way faster. But we're seeing a lot of defense choices here that are kind of messing things up there. And we saw it right there again. However, Gaku could go with a relatively safe choice here, going with the Valkyries and Root Riders, which I have had a lot of success with. This is what I'm currently using in Legend League. This is what I'm using in almost all my wars here. It is one of the strongest attacks in the game, and it has the potential to go fast as well. Looks like over to the left side, he does get the defensive queen under control there with some headhunters. Valkyries working out there. Root Riders over to the right side with the Roar Champion supporting. Get past the defensive Roar Champion. Everybody else going right down the gut of the base there. Queen should be able to get that Super Dragon under control. But remember, Super Dragon hitting a big, big clump of Root Riders can stop their progress through the base. Log Launcher does get the base open, though. And a couple of Root Riders are splitting off to the left there. The King's advancing forward there. Gets down the Spell Tower by the Town Hall. Gets them on it down. He steps all the way over and will secure the Town Takedown, allowing this Queen to split off there. Whether she goes north or south is kind of irrelevant right now, as long as she keeps moving here and keeps the cleanup fast. But he sees that Skeleton... Or he puts the Skeleton Spell into the Tessa farm over the right side of the base there. Spawns the hogs. He's got the hog puppet and the haze file. Gonna get the extra speed of the world champion to get this done a little bit faster. But he needs to get more cleanup over the right side. The skeleton spell is gonna get the cleanup done. That works out. That maybe was planned, maybe not. Either way, is going to get the world champion to continue to push forward here without having to worry so much about the cleanup. But freeze is up the back side of the base there. Try to save as many hogs as possible. Keep them alive. One more freeze into the scatter shot. He's got it under control. And it does look like it is going to be a little bit faster than we saw out of Tribe Gaming. Let's go check the official time and let's see exactly where the split sits right now. But Navi is going to take an early lead here by it looks like about 18 seconds on the overall attack. Looks like Exkosis is going to be our next attacker though. So let's dive in and see what he's got for us. It is going to be Root Riders and Valkyries once again. Root Riders and Valkyries using the new level of the Siege Barracks to support and go through the Town Hall directly. When the Eagle Artillery is in the very, very middle of the base, and you're not trying to attack opposite to try to get it down earlier, then you might as well go through the Town Hall, run the Healing Tome, use the Skeleton Spells to provide the distraction. Pot that early Ward ability, which is... 
usually the way that I like to use it anyways, but a lot of times people like to delay a little bit there when they are attacking opposite of the Town Hall to try to get more healing out of it. Let the troops actually take some damage first, but in the attack through the Town Hall, it makes a lot of sense to go with this. And then we go into the two multi-infernos, and then we add the healing through those as well, still active from that healing tome. But looking at hero equipment, we got the Giant Glide on the King, we got the Frozen Arrow on the Queen, and then the Rogue Champion is going to run Seeking Shield with the Royal Gem. We need to get this Lava Hound under control over the right side. Like, uh, Queen is kind of avoiding it. Our champion is way up to the left side of the base there. The Queen is over the far right side of the base there. And he's going to leave that Hound alone. That Leave that Hound alone is going to save him a lot of time there. If he can avoid popping it all together. But the Queen is an attacking now. She burst it. RC is about to finish off the defenses here. So, even if the Hound does have to be dealt with, he's getting... Well, he's got the pups mostly under control already. Queen's taken out of action here. But the Hogs popping out there. Or where'd those, where'd those hogs come from? He must have had hogs in his siege barracks, right? Very, very, very fast attack there from Exocis. A little bit of a dance right there. What was his overall attack time? It was... Oh my god, that was fast. Holy cow, that was fast. What was that? A minute and 20 seconds. 80 second attack. Right there for Exocis. Unbelievable attack speed. And if Navi doesn't match it, then Tribe will pull ahead on time. All right, Pete Castro, keep the speed up here. We are seeing a lot of double perfect wars. We expected the last war between Navi and Tribe to go to a double perfect, but it did not because of the defensive CC troops going out and wrecking Navi while they were trying to rush attacks. And now we'll see if they end up having the same problem this war. As uh, so we see Pete Castro diving in, and Supercell did address the very, very heavily offensive meta with a Twitter post of the new community manager just said that we are aware of the concerns regarding the current meta, especially with the Root Riders, and they are trying to talk about ways that they can potentially fix it. So you can see uh, Fernando's post on Twitter. He's the new community manager, but we do need to see this uh, defensive Super Dragon get under control here in a hurry to make sure that it doesn't cause any problems with the attack here. He does have the World Champion locked into it now, but Super Dragon does a lot of damage right there. Does some damage to everything in the area there. But look at this Dragon Rider over to the side. Going to go pick up the Eagle Artillery. Dragon Riders being just tossed it across the top of the base as well. Attacked at all the different sides. Attacking every different side of the base there simultaneously. He does have the World Champion running the Hog Puppet and the Haze File. Surging across the core of the base there. She does take some big hits right there. It's very, very close to going down. He'll freeze one more time to make sure she survives. And into the end of the attack. And look at the attack time in this one. Pete Castro cruising through this base. All the blues go to the left side of the base. Probably should have put those down earlier. Probably shouldn't have delayed those. But I think they are going to have a time advantage here. As this one clocks in at a minute and 32 seconds. Let's check the average attack time. Let's see where our two teams stand against each other. And my goodness. It is a six second split on the overall. Three seconds per attack after the second exchange. So one thing that I have suggested that Supercell could potentially do to try to make so that we don't just see non-stop double perverted wars in Clash of Clans Esports, but still potentially make so that normal players could still get the high triple race there. Maybe they still need to nerf things across the board there, or buff things across the board there, and balance a little bit for so everybody who plays Clash of Clans right now. But I feel like since they just recently made the change that allowed you to spin regular wars and friendly wars at the same time without sharing a war timer, if they made the separation of the two things in the code of the game, then I feel like, I'm not a, I'm not a coder, so I don't know if this is 100% possible, but I feel like since they had that separation, they could potentially add like a difficulty slider into the game. So when you play in a friendly war, you could choose how much of a defense boost all the defenses get. Maybe a 10% or a 20% boost of all the defense's damage could be all the difference in the world to make things go from a 100% hit rate, or I guess most of the uh, top, top end pro players are hitting uh, above a 90% hit rate right now. And you could end up pushing those hit rates down significantly into maybe, I don't know, uh 40% hit rate, 60% hit rate, like we saw at Town Hall 16. And that way, we can still have the game be easy enough for the average players out there to still have fun and get some triples, where it doesn't feel impossible for them like it did at Town Hall 15. But at the same time, we can have an option to make the pro scene a lot more difficult so we aren't just seeing perfect wars after perfect wars after perfect wars. However, this one is struggling a little bit here. He, I think he's going to be okay, though. I think he's got enough force there, but it is slowing down a little bit here. Yo-Yo is 
running into a little bit of problems here, but he's got that RC seeking shield. He'll sweep out the back end of the defenses and quickly go into cleanup here. We did see life gem. We did see the healer puppet. The healer puppet did a lot of work there because it spawned the healers. And then the healers ended up transferring off of the queen after she got her job done. And then they went over to the Royal Champion. And that kept the Royal Champion alive all the way to the end so she could pop her ability and get the base down. So now, with that one on the board, we'll pass it back over to Navi and we'll see if they can keep the triples rolling. Whenever we see heroes on the edge of the base here where we can get early access to them and controlled access to them, then the Root Riders are going to do a very, very good job because a lot of times, one of the biggest problems with Root Riders in general are the defensive heroes being at a position where they just become annoying to deal with. But he's going to put his World Champion in very, very early to the left side of the base with a skeleton spell locking out the defensive world champion he's getting into her no issues he's got headhunters with the same setup on the other side here gonna get the defensive queen down over there Valkyrie's providing tanking, Root Riders providing tanking, and now the World Champion will get it done at the top of the base there with the Root Riders taking over the tanking, making sure to put freezes on that side, keep the World Champion safe, make sure his top flank does not fall. But he needs to get to the town hall here. Has the log launcher pushing through there, gets the spell tower down, and the walls are open. But everybody's taking the scenic route. They're going to take their time to get to the town hall, but at least the Yetis will get down the monolith right there and make sure that the town hall is not as dangerous of an area. But looking at the clock here, we're looking at a two minute remaining right now. RC ability still intact there, Queen ability still intact. Skeleton spell is going down to try to keep the world champion alive through the last couple of defenses, but she's getting targeted by the town hall. That's gonna slow him down a little bit there, but he's got the cleanup over there. Pops to RC ability. She does survive through it. Everybody converges on the town hall all at the same time. Kazuma clocking this one in at a minute and 21 seconds. Lightning fast here again for Navi. Now let's look to the average attack time because I think that Navi's on top. Navi currently holding a 13 second on average, which calculates out to about 39 seconds on the overall. They got a massive lead right now, and they're bringing this game to Tribe. Kronos is in next. We are going to see Root Riders with Skeleton Spells broadside across the top of the base here, and it is going to be Valkyries again. And I've been saying that this is one of the fastest attacks in the game. It's also one of the most powerful attacks in the game right now. So he will just broadside this entire top edge of the base. Queen goes left flank. We got the Siege Barracks in the top corner of the base, and everybody will just kind of converge on the core. So what I was just telling our Twitch chat here is one of the ways that I think that we could get the the defensive or the defenses to actually happen here is uh, maybe maybe if we just like across the board supercell in a chat an attempt to rebalance the game. Oh my gosh, the super dragon got a lot of problem here. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm really focused on the super dragon. Okay, it goes down. Okay, back to what I'm saying. <laughs> I feel like if they just like added one percent to all the defenses across the board and then spam this attack at a bunch of bases and then check the triple rate and then they repeatedly did that as they went up another percentage boost on all of the damage output and they just kind of did that over and over until we decided what was going to happen and we could see exactly where we end up having a drop off in defenses or in uh, in offense then that could give us what we need to be able to get the information that we want to find out how much to buff the offense or buff the i'm sorry i'm so scatterbrained right now i'm watching things go wrong here and i don't know if he's got this under control i'm not sure if he's gonna triple this right now um sorry we gotta focus on this uh he's got the one pekka surviving he's got a couple of wizards surviving sorry my commentary was all over the place there but i think this queen is recovering a lot right now she's got the diggy king's going back through the base there but he's gonna end up attacking a wall here this ricochet cannon is going to be the biggest problem here. He's got one more freeze. It's cost him a lot of time right now. Does he get this? Kronos, are we okay here? He's going to get through the walls here, but he can't get through both walls. And the queen swung wide, but she does have access to go back in the multi-inferno. If they break the wall at the right time, she's right there. She circles around, though. He's going to put the freeze down. He's going to try to keep her alive, but he's out of healing. He breaks the wall. He steps his way through. Look at the attack time. He does get down the ricochet cannon, does get the multi-inferno down, and he does clock it in just over two minutes. But that is a big, big miss on time here. But it's a 20-second split here. I guess we'll see what happens here. It's way, way better than a straight up miss. It's still a triple in the end. Let me regather my thoughts here. What I was trying to say is if across the board, they increased the overall damage by like 1% at a time until we saw the triple rate there from spam attacks like Root Riders and Valkyries start to drop off. And so that, I mean, if they just did that in general, I feel like overall the entirety of the meta is quite balanced as far as one attack being no no attack is 
massively more powerful than any other attack right now. So I think overall we see a lot of balance in the meta as a whole, but I just think everything is too strong collectively. So there are ways that we could uh, get around that, but I think in general they need to give a little bit of a boost to all the defenses. But at the same time, I think that the best route to go for the pro community would be, like I was saying earlier, with a defense slider to be applied to friendly wars so they could choose their difficulty. However, it is going to be more Rune Riders, more Valkyries as Navi tries to sustain their lead here. Rune Riders and Valkyries are the fastest attack in the game or is it the Electro Dragons or is it the Lalo attacks? I guess there's a lot of different things here. I heard uh, the fastest attack that we have seen since the release of this update was a 57 second Lalo. We know that Lalo is one of the fastest attacks in the game right now, but we know that these Super Dragons cause a lot of problems as well. Look at the Super Dragon in the core of the base here. Does have it under poison, does have a skeleton spell right there, but Super Dragon breaks loose there. The Queen getting the lock onto it. Looks like she's got the Frozen Arrow. She will shut it down right there. And so he's got it back under control, but he needs to get into the back end of the base. He's got to get through the Town Hall and through the Monoth. He's got the Freeze right there, but the Monoth takes out the Root Riders right there. The Warden is making his way into it. Look at the Warden here. The Warden clutches and does get the assistance with the Clan Castle troops, staying away from following all the other heroes over the side of the base. And there's the stun again. Diggy taking stuns on the Town Hall, getting him through. He's got the Hawk pump in the backside hey file on the backside and look at the attack speed again for navi one minute and 17 seconds there for stars and they are not letting up on their attack speed unbelievable right now with a current 23 second split on average attack time times that by four and that's the difference between the teams right now navi has tribe gaming on the ropes right now the Fire Clash League will come down to this exchange. Rakirez versus Klaus. The fastest attack is potentially going to side this, but then again, Navi has such a big advantage on time. I think that what Rakirez needs to do is just make sure that he triples this, take whatever time he needs, and then you just got to pray for a defense from Klaus. That's the only thing that could end up swinging this war right now, but then again, Anything can happen. Anything can happen. Rikira's in with the Zap into Lalo. Zap into Lalo can go very, very fast. But I don't think time is going to save Tribe Gaming at this point here. But then again, let's remember, Tribe Gaming defended Navi twice in their last war. They stopped them up and held them to 13 stars, even in this meta. Their base builders are very, very good. And they are obviously already shown to be capable of stopping Navi. We do see a dragon on defense. Was it a witch as well? Look, he's got that under control here. Looks like he's got the whole core of the base there under control. It'd be nice to get that multi-inferno down. But he's making his way towards the town hall. He does have the blues going out of Warded Ability right there, getting through the town hall and then surging out of it. We are seeing for Warden Equipment the life gem right there, but with the rage, he does get out of the poison there. Not going to be a problem. However, look at the Warden here. Warden sticking back there, following the Queen right now, leaving the blue stranded to make their way towards the scatter shot. That's going to be a problem. He's got a lot of heavy ground defense in the backside here that could be trouble for his Roar Champion. See more blues going to the backside of the base there. We do see the Seeking Shield, though. Roar Champion, where are we going? Uh oh. Uh oh. All right. Well, Roar Champion taking off to the left there, following Ground Skellies. We'll get a little bit of a regrouping with the other heroes right there, and they're all going to at least approach the last couple defenses together. I was concerned that they would end up arriving in separate packs there when the balloons are going down, and that would be a problem. But that actually kind of helps them, I think. I think. RC Shield still intact here. Queen goes inside of the base right there. We'll get the lock on of the Expo to keep the damage off the World Champion, giving her the punch that she needs. And with the RC ability still intact, we can go ahead and hit it on the last couple defenses here, and that will be a triple here for Tribe Gaming. They hit the 15 stars, but I don't know if that's enough. I don't know if that's enough. It's gonna come down to Klaus. Klaus will decide this Grand Finals Championship in the Fire Clash League. No, 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 I got, they got locked out. Let me in. Come on. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Let me in, let me in. There we go, we're in, we're in, we're in. Okay. <laughs> I swear I thought we were about to miss the final attack of the war to decide this grand finals. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Klaus is in. All right, that was scary for a minute. That was scary, but it's okay. We have Root Riders. We have Valkyries. Klaus in with the attack that will decide this grand finals. Now, I don't think he has to 
rush this. I think he could take his time, although it is going to start in very, very rapidly. He starts in more at the very bottom of the base there. More Riders, more Rue Riders, more Valkyries down there. As the blimp secures the tower takedown, and everybody else will go across the middle of the base there. There's a lightning to the backside. Doesn't do the lightning on this setup, does it in the middle of the attack. More Rue Riders, more Valkyries. I mean, while everybody else is using Rue Riders and Valkyries as a spam attack, Klaus is doing a surgical approach here with three different entries on the base and will try to protect every different phase of the attack there. Down south there, doing a good job. The king makes his way across the middle. He's got a lot of damage relieved on the backside of the base with the lightning already. And he's looking pretty solid here. I think he's got it mostly under control. He's just got to get the world champion to survive. Queen still has her ability intact. He's got extra headhunters that he can throw down for cleanup wherever he wants. And it looks like everything on every part of the attack there is converging together. Klaus has it 100% under control here. It is going to be a triple. We almost missed it. That would have been really, really bad. But it does look like the double perfect war is a success. Navi, however, has the time advantage and they will claim first place there. Almost going undefeated across the upper bracket of the Fire Clash League. They had a little bit of resistance there from Tribe in the match before this. They won excuse me tribe gaming won the first match 13 to 15 but navi takes it on the perfect war and will win the tiebreaker with an average attack time of one minute and 28 seconds unbelievably fast right now and that's what you have to do to win esports at the moment you gotta triple you gotta get perfect wars and you gotta you gotta keep the attack speed fast and navi did that today and they will be crowned our champions